Hey guys, welcome back to a, another maintenance video. I figured since I showed you that one there on the 4840, I'd go ahead and grab a little video footage here on the Alice Chalmers 8070. And on this one here, doing the same thing. Air filters, fuel filters, hydraulic and transmission. And yes, for anybody wondering, this 8070 has a Cummins 8.3 in it. <coughs> Best thing that ever happened, happened to these tractors. Yeah, we're not too bad there. We get busy and like, if we get running in a lot of dust and that kind of stuff, I'll take and take the air gun clean these filters all out well the outer filter i don't blow the inner filter out but um, i will take an air gun blow the outside filter the big filter all out and clean it all up good if we're really dusty i'll actually do that every day and that just keeps all the dust that dirt out of it and that kind of stuff now this tractor here uh you see that rubber hose right back there on top that goes up and hooks into the exhaust. It's like a pre-cleaner. The John Deere's, they have something similar to that. It's not a, well, take that back. Uh, the 4955 and what we call the old 4840, the one that we've had since 2007. Um, those, they do have you know, somewhat of a pre-cleaner on the cap piece that goes over top of the whole housing. It's like a, um, oh, kind of like a funnel looking cup type deal that it collects dirt in, dirt in. Now, the new 4840, the one that I've told you that we bought in at the end of 2020, that one actually does have a, um, like a pre-cleaner deal going off of the air intake and into the exhaust pipe. And from what I've been able to see, it, it seems to work pretty well. But yeah, like I say, right there's that Cummins motor. Uh, we got this tractor back in 2005. And we're, if I remember right, we are actually second owner on it. The first owner um, uh, had bought it new. And right up there in the cab on the side of the steering column... There is actually a little sticker that was put up in here. And um, the new engine here was put in 5-7 of 1999. And if I remember, I, I think this tractor is a 1984. I would need to get the serial number off the back of it just to verify it. But I remember him telling us that he had overheated the engine and ruined the engine. Which actually in these 8070s was pretty common. And the reason for that was that, Al in fact, it's actually a real popular Alice motor the 426 which is what the 7060s run 7080 um uh, but when in the 80 set when they came out with the 8070 they were um uh, everything was good as long as you um uh, kept everything at the factory settings 
but I've had a mechanic tell me that um, because a lot of these 8070s had front wheel assist, guys thought they could pull the world apart, so they'd get on the fuel pump and crank the fuel pump up and overheat the motor. And <clears throat> I'm assuming that's what happened to this one. And there's actually a place, as far as I know, they're actually still in business called uh, Hunley's down around Austin, Indiana. And they make up the converter plate for back here in the back and to be able to put the Cummins 8.3. And um, like I say, that's the best thing that ever happened to this tractor. We never have trouble with overheating. It actually gave a little bit more horsepower than factory because like I just showed you in there on the wall, it's uh, rated at 205. Take that back, not the wall. I can show you right here on the sticker, right there. Gross rated horsepower, 205. And so that was a much better concept. That's why on that on the prototype 8095, they were um, uh, actually going to have a Komatsu engine. And um, in fact, I think the guy that actually ha that owns the two prototypes that are out there, he's out in Missouri. I think one of those, if I remember, I'm trying. I can't remember. I think one of them do have a. Um, uh, the Komatsu engine, and the other, other has the Cummins, if I remember right. All right, now we're back here working on the fuel footers. This tractor actually has three. It's got, uh, you can kind of see it right, that's the top, or the mount, or the unit, the mount part. And it spins on from up underneath, and it's got these two spin-ons spin right here. Not sure how what well, yeah, you're not gonna be able to see a whole lot underneath there. And actually, my regular filter wrench is not gonna work. I don't have enough room room. I gotta get my other filter wrench. Alright, I grabbed my filter strap right here. Let's see how well this works. It's kind of a tight spot to get into. And yeah, I know you're not gonna see a whole lot. Unlike yesterday, we got rain today. That's what you're hearing hit the shed roof. It also helps when you take and turn the filter the right way to get it off. Yeah, yesterday it was pretty nice up, but now we got rain. All morning, it was just kind of like some light rain off and on, but now it's really picked up. Hey, there we go, finally, you got the spun off. Yeah, there we go. I took a, um, right here, I took a wide mouth pair of vice grips and um, pinched the, ho the hose coming from the fuel tank up to the first filter here. I got that pinched off, I thought. I may have actually had to take and tighten up just a bit more. I grab a rag right quick, wipe my fingers off.
obviously I didn't pinch down tight tight enough. There we go. Okay, now we're slowing down like I wanted. <clears throat> there we are. Just direct around the spin on the filter. Get him all shook out. And yeah, not too bad inside. That's why I keep old shop towel rags just sitting back here on the back of the golf cart they work great for at least just taking getting all that heavy fuel off your fingers all righty number 34 39 coming right up same thing on these here i change them every year and so i don't even put the date on it i just know every spring we're good to go and Another quick trick to take and put a little bit of oily film on that uh, O-ring. Just take and put the new one on top of the old one. Make sure they connect good. And that usually, usually does the trick. Hey, there we go. That'll work. Drop the old one back in the old box. My fingers are oily enough I can just use my hands. <laughs> now on this tractor, also on the hydraulic and also on the tranny. Can't even see where I'm going. There we go. I'm not sure how much of the, on those I'm going to be able to film due to the fact that it's clear up underneath the tractor and it's hard to have a camera on my head crawling around up underneath there because you're constantly smacking it on everything. So probably what I'll do, I'll show you where they go. But I'm not going to be able to film a whole lot because, like I said, it's hard to work when you're... i got to be on my creeper rolled up underneath there working on it. The transmission I might be able to show some, some before I take it off and then once I get it taken down I can show you what it looks like and maybe I can do that also on the two hydraulic filters as well. Okay, well that's like I say, that's basically why I'm doing changing filters so I'll bring you back in when I'm getting ready to take and Put the two new filters back on right there on the side of the engine and um, I'll show you as far as bleeding the air out just like I did, did on the 4840. All right, just wanted to bring you back in here and show you right quick. That pair of vice grips I showed you I had on the hoe on the fuel line, I took those off right here on top of the bracket, that little tab, that's an air bleeder. And so, Take and get that thing spun open, it'll let the air out of that filter. There we are.
Yeah, and that's the rain coming down. It picked right back up again. All right. There's the fuel bubbling out around that bleeder, and so give it just a little bit more, and it should have that filter basically filled back up. You can see it spitting out around it. It's kind of coming and going, but uh, here in a little bit, the air should all be pushed out. And then I'll be ready to jump up to these two filters right there. Needless to say, this, um, uh, once the fuel goes through these, th through these three filters, it's definitely clean <laughs> before it gets up to the pump. There it quit shooting air out of it. So it stopped spitting air, turn it back off, and there you got it. That's got that bottom filter with the air bled out of it. All right, I just got them two um, uh, filters off right there. Right here is the new small one in my hand. But yeah, they just go right up underneath there and spin right on. And um, once you get them put on, I'll show you about getting that little bleeder right there broke loose. You get the fuel, the air all bled out of it and you're good to go again. So just thought I'd show you what it looks like with them things spun off there. All right, got the new filters here put back on. And I got a little 10 millimeter wrench. Take and loosen that little bleeder screw up right there. And basically the same thing, just like on that 4840. You got it. Well, actually it's, it's the lift pump and it actually runs off of the camshaft. And um, it's got the manual pump built right into it because your camshaft runs right down along through there. And so um, your lift pump is what supplies the fuel to the fuel pump. You just want to take and push that little button up and down, and you can see that spitter right there. Now I can feel it on that button, and you can probably see it, it kind of stopped. It's got to get a little bit more air kind of brought through the system because of taking that apart down below. Now, once again, if you have the Alice motor in, a, in your 8070 or 8050 is going to be entirely different. In fact, I'm not exactly sure. It may be set up similar to a 7060. I think they did take and change the fuel pump on those when they, came, when they got into the 8000 series. Also, you can tell when your fuel filters are getting full. That's kind of a dull thunk. You can hear how that right there clink has a nice ring to it. So that one's still empty yet. I got the air primed out of this lift pump. And so the back filter right there is basically full. In fact, it almost sounds like this, the ring on that front footer has changed slightly. There we go. Because from what I've seen, um, you can put a Cummins 8.3 into an 80.70, of course. Okay, there's the fuel that's dripping. 
I'm going to take and shut that back off. And just like on the 4840, I'm going to take and um, just push that right on through the pump and through the return. All right, that's tighten back down, drop the wrench, and keep on pumping. You can put an 83 into an 8070 and also into an 8050. And I've seen on uh, some of my Alice Chalmers tractor groups where you can take and put a, um, I think, it would be a Cummins 5.9 into the 8030 and I think the 8010, if I remember correctly. Okay, you hear that? That's the fuel forcing through the pump and forcing through the return. All right, we're good to go. That's got the filters changed and air bled on a Cummins 8.3. So like I say, I'll be bringing you back in here when I get ready to do the hydraulic which are literally up underneath, kind of in behind the, the saddle tanks, the, the two fuel tanks on each side. So those are kind of a pain to get to. I will step around back. If you can see that round canister housing right there, that is the transmission filter. And so there once again, trying to work up through there with a camera on my head is easier said than done. And so probably what I have to do, once I get taken apart, I'll show you what it looks like inside, but it's awful hard to work either back in here or up underneath on the hydraulic when I have a camera stuck on top of my head. <laughs> so but I'll try and get as much footage of what I'm doing as possible. All right, I'm working here on this transmission filter, like I sh j just showed you. And I've got the canister all loosened up. It's got a draw bolt that you simply loosen up down here on the bottom. It goes all the way up through and it tightens in up here at the top. And so I've got that loosened up. That way it lets the oil drain out. But like I say, trying to work here between the three point and the tire and trying to get stuck down in here, it's practically impossible to try and film anything as I'm as I'm as I'm taking it off so once I get the thing down out of there I'll show you what it looks like and here's what it looks like got this piece that goes in the top there's a magnet on each side right there just take well pull the footer out first if you can get the balance just right, that canister will sit right there. There we are. And I'm just going to grab a, an old rag here. And I'll show you. You can kind of see... Yeah, there we go. You can see the metallic stuff kind of wiping off from the white. So it does collect some junk. But other than that, though, they're clean. Then right there is the new one. Drop it in. Put it back down the canister. Done deal. Now if I can get that bolt to line up like it should. Ah, there we go. And there we are. That's got it. And then, like I say, these magnets just stick back up in that housing right there and um, filter as the oil is being pumped through. 
So like I said, if you're well, I'll just take, take and show you right quick what it looks like, and that's got it. And let's see here. I'll try to bring in on one of the hydraulic filters. That's clear up underneath, though. We'll see how well that'll work. i got to get my creeper and roll up underneath there and get them popped out. All right, guys, I'm up here underneath the tractor on the left-hand side. Right there is the tire. And right here, I got to take that cap off, and there's a filter that goes inside that. And it's the same thing over here on the right-hand side. There's two filters, and those are, are the hydraulic filters. Like I say, being up underneath here, that's why I can't film while I'm doing, doing it. And so, depending on how oily my hands are, on whether or not I can try and grab a video and show what it looks like once I get that cap popped off, I'm not even going to bother trying to film the, film the right-hand side because both sides are identical. Same thing. And so, um, I'll try and see if I can show you what it looks like once I get that footer down out of there. And there's what it looks like with the cap off. I gotta be careful, I don't wanna drop my phone into that oil bucket. <laughs> but um, uh, that's got the cap off. The only difference between left and right side is the left hand filter is all about two and a half inches shorter than the left hand. Okay. Right there's the new filter. The old filter is actually in that bucket. Over here is the right hand new filter. And like I say, the left hand's just a couple inches shorter than the right hand one is. And it does, ha it's like a screen type deal. You pop out and just plug into the new one. It's like a little metal type mesh screen that goes in there in the end of it. And, um, other than that, though, then right there is the cap. Well, the cap's, that's the inside part. The filter actually seats in there, and out here is the outside tabs where the bolt heads go through. But, um, yeah, that's how you change the hydraulic filters on 8070. And actually, on an Alice Chalmers uh, 7060 and 7045, which we have both, it's the exact same setup. And so, just thought I'd show you what, what that looks like. All right, guys. Well, I just got done on doing, let's see here, it'd be the right-hand side underneath there on the hydraulic filter. And it's just the same exact thing as the left hand. So, that's got the filters all changed. And I've talked to my brother someday. I'd love to repaint this thing. You can see where the previous owner got out here with a spray can poking around that made it a mess but um my my brother paints vehicles and i'd love to be able to repaint this thing make it look like a brand new one anyway i think i'm going to call that an end of this video i know it's been a little bit longer but uh that's just the basics on changing filters and that kind of stuff on, on an 8070 with a cummins motor in it so take care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.